So hi, well the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with I'm Andrew. And I'm Nick. And we're in Have Mercy. And we're asking some questions say about their upcoming self-titled EP. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Uh it's been a little overwhelming because we haven't really released anything as this uh core group of guys in seven years or so yeah it's been since 2016 16 was the last time that was when we released the somebody's baby single Mm -hmm. and um and that was the last time that we did anything and then you know and uh we're back you know (laughs) welcome back you know it's like the it's it's like when john nolan rejoins uh (laughs) take it back sunday you know yeah (laughs) yeah I'm not saying I'm John Nolan. Oh, okay. <laughs> that would be crazy, but yeah. yeah. Um, so first time that you guys are all back together in seven years. Like, how did you guys kind of all get back together? Because I know Brian was going to end the project in 2020 after his farewell tour with that. So what what was kind of the idea to kind of get you guys all back together? Um. So you were on that tour. Yeah. So I was on that tour, and I think that tour, just with the whole COVID thing, it never felt complete and i know brian never felt like it had a like a closure or or so yeah because you didn't the hometown show get postponed from the pandemic yeah like the last week um the last show was in canada and we thought we were gonna get stuck in toronto and it was a mess wow yeah Yeah. and then the last the hometown show todd and i were supposed to play that one yeah that was gonna be like a surprise it was gonna be like a surprise like they were gonna play their set and then and then like end it and then for the encore Todd and I were going to come out and you know and be like surprise motherfucker <laughs> you know like mm-hmm. um but can we cuss sorry yes you're, yeah. you're good yeah okay yeah I was sure if like somebody's mom was watching or something um no. but yeah so that was supposed to happen and then um and then you know we just kind of grew apart you know you know how people do you know you, when you stop working with somebody you know you don't really talk to them all that much and then Brian moved into my he actually lives in so we're in my apartment right now he lives in the apartment below me oh, wow. he's actually working on his couch right now <laughs> and uh and that's why you get us <laughs> but um and then um we just kind of reconnected and stuff and then I would have people over for like wrestling pay-per-views so like Nick would come over Brian would come over and then you know, we slowly started like, you know, talking more, you know, those lines of communication opened up. Todd got really into fishing. So <laughs> we, um, that's a true story. Um, and then me, Nick and Brian had like a wrestling podcast that we were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I have these awesome lights. Love that. Uh, and then, um, and then Brian wrote like a song and then he was doing his solo thing. And then he wrote a song and he sent it to us and he's like, I wrote a song. It's not really a Brian Swindle song. It's a, like more of a Have Mercy song. And then here we are. Yeah. One song turned into seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the EP fucking bangs. It hurts oh, yeah. to listen to as does everything else that you guys have out. So <laughs> great job on that. <laughs> Didn't skip did a again. beat. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the EP title or cover art? Kind of. Yeah. Uh, you okay. Yeah, so the cover art, like we kind of, it was kind of like a, a means of, so everything in the fire represents one member of the band. Like the whiskey bottle is Brian's, you know, battle with alcohol and him getting sober. Uh, the baseball glove is for me. And I kind of left the band and kind of did like a thing of professional baseball for a little bit. Nice. And then Todd is his gambling with the cards. And then mine was like a cassette deck and stuff because I was like, honestly, like done with music. Like, I didn't want to listen to it. I didn't touch my guitars or anything, you know. And it wasn't, like, a jaded thing. It was just, like, you know, you just get burnt out on something. And mm-hmm. and it was just, like, that burnout. I didn't really know what it was, you know. Yeah. So and But, like, I would just, like, come home and just, like, sit on my couch and just, like, watch TV. And I became, like, obsessed with, like, television. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Which, like, before I would come home from work, like, have, like, some music playing, like, mm-hmm. cooking, like, stuff like that. And then, like, you know, like, after, like, I was just so burnt out, I would just come home, smoke weed, and watch TV. Like, that was it. Like, and, you know, I mean, that's cool to do sometimes, but not, yeah. like, you know, every day of the year, you know. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So, but, yeah. All right. And then, All right. And then the, uh, the title, like, I initially pitched it as it just being, like, untitled. You know, like, oh. how, like 
how like Led Zeppelin had like Zeppelin one, two, three, and four. Like it was just supposed to be like, you know, just like a untitled EP. But then um that was Paul, a, I think that was a label thing. And then, not, I'm not gonna say it was a label it was thing, a label. but it was a, it was a it was a label thing. It was a creative thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, creative differences, creative. we'll call it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, cre- you know, in wrestling terms, you know, you always blame creative. So <laughs> mm-hmm. so uh creative, you know, put the because I didn't I initially envisioned it with like no like not just the picture you know Mm -hmm. but that's just my style you know like the background that I come from you know Mm -hmm. like a lot of like those like I listen to a lot of 70s like adult oriented rock like yacht rock and stuff Mm -hmm. and a lot of those albums like don't have their names on it it's just like a picture to look at as you're listening to the album but Ah. you know yeah all right all right uh so can you guys tell us a little bit about your writing process for this EP yeah um yeah so what how we did we actually did it in my preferred way which was like at our own pace Mm -hmm. so um you know brian we recorded it in brian's apartment so you know my commute was terrible yeah it was so much traffic every morning yeah Yeah. yeah. Um, and then so like we kind of would like lay down like a skeleton like almost like a pre-production thing send it to todd todd would like write his kind of stuff And then we went and recorded the drums with Justin Day in Glen Burnie, who's like uh, like a legendary dude in our area for like, you know, if you recorded something ever in your career, he has, you know, somehow been involved in the production. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And then uh, and then we went back to Brian's apartment. That's when we did like the the guitars and vocals and stuff. But like it was really cool because I was able to like record like this portion of this song and then be like, oh, I've got an idea for, you know, this song. So we did that. And then we initially recorded three songs and then like had like one like kind of acoustic um, song. And then we got and then we all got better gear. So we re-recorded it again and we actually re-recorded the EP four times. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, like not like so like I have like a, and it's so weird hearing like the stuff like from when we first started to like the stuff that's released now, you know, it's just really cool yeah. to mm-hmm. see like how like our playing and our writing evolved, you know, over like the span of a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's you wild. Know, like that type of thing. And then, um, and then, and then when we did the three additional songs or the two additional songs, three additional songs, um, two, we did two more and then one, we did three more. Okay. and then um okay. there's seven um, <laughs> and then we did uh the three more and um those todd actually we set up an electronic drum set in swindle's apartment and he was able to like record like some like pre-production drums where you're able to like you know kind of you know it was really cool like actually like writing separately but also together at the same time you know everybody had a vote so like if if i thought something nick was playing was dumb i would be like yo dog that's dumb something <laughs> else and he would do the same thing with my guitar stuff like on one of them he was like i want you to play something like 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 you too and then that's how the stuff from spit it out happened mm-hmm. you know so nice yeah. all right that's sick uh, so i want you two to tell us your favorite lyric off this ep and the meaning behind it Oh, that's a good question. That is a good Thank one. Um, I don't really know the lyrics to that. <laughs> um, you could do your favorite moment, if that's easier. Our favorite moment mm-hmm. from recording? Uh, like, on the album? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. I mean, sonically, I think, like, Spit It Out is my jam. Like, that's, mm-hmm. like, my favorite one that we've done. That's, like, your classic, like, angsty have mercy you know, just with a little polish on it. And mm. then I honestly think that guitar solo that I did in that is one of the best things I've ever done yeah. um, in my entire, you know, I've been playing guitar for 25 years and I think that's the best thing I've ever done, honestly. Love think, that. Uh, that's great. For me, I think uh, Strawberry Hill is probably oh, a song yeah. for me. I forget about it's that one That one sounds more... Like the kind of stuff that like I grew up listening to, and then even I think it's like, that's kind of like the song that sounds more like early Had Mercy as well. And I think those the lyrics on that song really strike a chord with me, just because like obviously I didn't write the song, but still like going through, uh, I was kind of going through like, like a breakup over the winter, and that song kind of like really did 
I was like, damn, Brian, did you write this song about me? And he's like, no. I was like, well, it sounds like you wrote it about me. I think it's funny yeah. because, the, cause like, as we were recording it, Swindle and I were both in relationships that you, and you like, not funny, but you were kind of, where, like, normally it was the opposite. Yes. Normally mm-hmm. I was always, like, the one that was just like, yep, just, like, gonna go to the bar by <laughs> myself. Like, and then, um, you know, I also think, like, like, because I also stopped drinking. And I think that also really, you know, like, kind of having that clear head, mm-hmm. you know, kind of recording. Uh, wouldn't clear all the time if you don't. If you don't nah. <laughs> Just yeah. clear more of the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, have to wash your hair sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, I also think, also on Spit It Out, I'm sorry if I'm talking about that. No, so you're much. good. No, you're go good. for I'm it. Able, I'm finally able to talk about one of my favorite, as um, the opening line, like the song off your hands, because you can take that as like, on multiple different things where like i took it as like because when we used to go out drinking we used to drink a lot of tequila mm-hmm. and you and we would always do like 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 our hand oh. people, do shot and stuff like mm-hmm. that it could also be taken you know as like you know like like licking a wound you know something like that you know yeah all right wow all right. that is clever yeah hmm. uh so where was your headspace at while you guys were writing the cp oh man i had one of the best head spaces like honestly because like i when i when we first started like toying around with the idea of recording and stuff i just got i just started um dating my girlfriend who i'm still dating now i love becky hi um <laughs> um and she really because i was kind of like a negative guy like my sense like what i thought was funny and enjoyable for me was like as I say, like dunking on other people, essentially like making fun of other people uh, to make me feel better mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And just kind of like, and then like, I was also like, I, I wouldn't say I was an alcoholic. I was more of a binge drinker. So like, if I started drinking, I couldn't stop, but I could go like days, weeks and months without drinking, mm-hmm. you know, like I was more of like a party guy. Yeah. And then, um, and then when we started recording, I kind of like knocked all that off. And then I kind of, I came home one night with my girlfriend and she was, I was just complaining about er- like everything that came out of my mouth was just like a complaint, just like negative. And I have this coworker who does that, who I don't really like. And uh, she was like, Hey, you sound like your coworker and my mm-hmm. job kind of hit the floor. Yeah. So I've kind of, you know, intentionally been trying to have like a more positive outlook on life and like, you know, not see the glass half full or half empty, just happy. I have a glass. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Like that type of thing, and mm-hmm. um, and I kind of wanted to translate that to like the writing and stuff on this too. Like you know, I wanted this to be like the every time we record, I always think of it as like documenting a, a time in our life, and you can kind of see that because like the stuff that we recorded earlier and stuff that's more like angsty and negative and stuff, and then the stuff that like the last three songs that we did are more like a positive, more like upbeat mm-hmm. kind of like a more hopeful outlook you know like sonically Mm -hmm. um and you could kind of really tell like you know the difference between the two Mm -hmm. i I guess just to piggyback off of what he was saying a little bit is uh i think it helped this time around like there was no pressure from labels or time frame or hey you know you guys got we got to get this done because you guys are going to go on tour for four months Mm -hmm. so like we really had to just going to Swindle's apartment and hanging out and just kind of talking things over and not really having an agenda and just seeing what actually happened, happened. And it made it just more natural, more relaxing feel. And again, like being like not a 20 year old kid and being a little bit older now, kind of just, it made everything a lot easier to process. Yeah. And you guys- day, it was, it's so funny because we just recorded this with no idea. Like we were just going to, Put it up on distro kid mm-hmm. and oh, just kind of do it ourselves and then dana and then you know kind of like some rumblings kind of started happening you know within our old circles and stuff and then dana our old publicist reached out to brian and all of us and was like hey um i want to help you guys out and then we were like we just want to you know dump it out on something you know and then she was like well you know paul her husband who directed a a movie that's called old 37 and and it's it's awesome you should check it out it's on tv um if you like horror movies um and then and they they started like kind of like a vanity label and that's who zodiac records is a lot of stuff that i've seen is like 
what the Zodiac Records, you know, have mercy started it. No, our, our you know, our publicist wanted to help us out and we wanted to help her out. You yeah. Know? So, mm-hmm. you know, get more eyes on her label and she helps, you know, us, you know, put our stuff out, you know. Mm-hmm. So. And in terms of like your recording process and everything, it was kind of like the perfect storm and you really only get the opportunity like when the band is kind of starting up and also if you guys are going to come back because really everybody thought you guys were dead for good. And oh, yeah. we were in the yeah. middle of a pandemic where you couldn't tour anyway. So it was like, you guys were just able to do this. Like you could still be working on it to this day. And like, no one would have really known. Mm-hmm. We were doing our wrestling podcast as the same time that we were. <laughs> and, recording no yeah. Yeah. and we were just acting normal. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we were just like, you can check it out. It's called young and the restless. We haven't done an episode in a while. Oh. It's restless. Like W R E S, you know, a uh, cheap plug. Um, and you know, there's video of us, you know, just like talking, you know, just hanging out, talking, wrestling, you know, stuff like that. And then like in the back of my head, I'm like, do not fucking mention the record. Like yeah. Adam, yeah, don't I, drop am a hint. The, I am the one with the loosest lips. I'm like, yo, if you can't tell, I love talking. I'm a little brother, you know, <gasps> didn't get a lot of attention, you know, growing up. So, you know, but, um, you know, it was so and kind of like it was kind of funny like putting on that facade of like us like the like people being like like we would have people on the podcast and they they would be like so is have mercy get back together and we're like nah nah not happening meanwhile two hours before you're recording you finished a song (laughs) and then we were just like oh by the way we have four songs in the in the hole just like chilling you know yeah it was kind of really cool you know and then as you mentioned like and it's so because we just like went on with our daily lives. We're like, yo, when are you free? You're like, oh, I'm free on Thursday. I'm free Thursday, you know, six to eight. And it's like, okay, like, let's go, you know, bang something out. Like, let's see what we can do. And we just kind of, you know, it was really cool just being able to like, I kept saying, like, whenever we would try something, I kept saying, we're not, we're not wasting tape. Like we had, mm-hmm. you know, unlimited takes. We could, you know, try weird shit mm-hmm. that we wanted to do and stuff. Like I, you know, I, bought like a, a guitar slide and I was like, oh, I'm going to use this. I used it on one song and I'm really <laughs> bad, you know, like, you know, but like, you know, at least I'm, at least we weren't wasting money doing that. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was me hanging out with my friends being like, look at me. Yeah. Isn't this so sick? I used it on one song. Like the wrap it up box from Chappelle show. Like, yo dog, like that's what they were doing to me. Too much fun. Yeah. Oh my God. Nick, anything you want to... I don't even know what the question was anymore. It, it was really just, wasn't like, a question. No, it was just me yeah. making a statement. No, 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 like, I already you know, answered being, my question. What was it, no, what was it like being dead? Yeah, it was pretty much like, you guys only get this opportunity twice in your career. When you're starting mm-hmm. the band and no one knows about you, and when you mm-hmm. kill the band and you come back. Mm-hmm. Like, to, to work at your pace. I mean, I kind of put it, I guess, behind me, right? I, I mean, at some point, like, I got a job. But, like, I mean, I guess, like, it's always kind of there. You're always kind of like, well, 10 years coming up, you know, like, oh, we got 10 year anniversary things coming up and people like, you still get emails, you still get like the royalty checks. So, you know, it's like, it's always like still a part of you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like no band ever truly dies. You know, there's always like that one kind of bond and there's always this something that's always possibly had. Yeah. Especially with like time hop and like Facebook and stuff, because Mm -hmm. you, sent a picture so we won our local like ernie ball battle of the bands for like yeah. war tour oh. back in the day 10 years ago oh, and that. before that and nick was just like yo like look what i found and it's like a a picture of us like playing and i was just and i we're just like drenched in sweat <laughs> yeah, it was we, were, we like took my minivan there and oh. we were like we carried all of our gear to the st- yeah. like the two miles to the stage and then they were like oh you're using our amps anyways and we're just like oh my god hey. <laughs> like you know and stuff like that so yeah. yeah and um it's just really it was it was really cool it's it's kind of like um in the in the dark knight rises like after batman's back gets broken and he does like all that training and he finally gets out of the cave like that's mm-hmm. kind of you know it's kind of relieving now <laughs> to be like that was a hell of a yeah <laughs> that was yeah i i, I am back <laughs> oh my god no i'm just kidding dude so stoked to meet you i'm glad we could have batman on the podcast yeah. <laughs> finally yeah 
Uh, so how do you guys recommend your fans to listen to this EP for the first time? Should they play it in the car with friends, dark with headphones on? Should they blast at a party, work out to it? What do you guys personally recommend? Oh, man. Man, mm-hmm. man I got mine. But, okay. You know, you might want to go first. Mine's going to take a little bit. Mine's a little bit. <laughs> I mean, every question for you is a little bit. So how, do I, <laughs> how do I say this shortly so we can get the 10 minutes in? Um, I feel like... <laughs> You know, look, what I do for a lot of times is like anything that I listen to, any band I like, I will take the, the time to listen to it in my own time where I can actually kind of dissect it. And then I'll show friends that maybe like, hey, this song means something to me to you. Like, it's like my friend Josh, like that's what we do. Like we'll send songs, like, hey man, listen to this song, this song reminds me of you. So like, especially like our music, our music, we're not like an upbeat, fun pop punk band. You know, we're not going to go throw streamers off stage and do spin kicks and like, I love those guys. Yeah, that's not us. Like our 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 music is a little bit more, you know, depressing or slower pace, whatnot. So brooding, like I, Batman. I mean, fuck it. <laughs> you know, yeah. If you want to throw a party and put on some "Have Mercy," then, people have. People have. I mean, that sounds like a Debbie Downer, but like, yeah. go for it. You know, I love our fans, <laughs> but weird people do that. You know, I used to have parties like, and just play Neil Diamond. I mean, if it's you know, but... thirty and people are starting to leave and like, if you want people really to leave your party, yeah. put on <laughs> yeah. If you want somebody to get out of your car, no, just get out. <laughs> um, no, like I really, um, I kind of listen to. I have music on, kind of randomly, like on in the background and stuff. But like, I've always loved like. When so, for example, like Alexis on Fire put out a new album, they're like one of my favorite bands. Um, and so. what I did is I put it, I loaded it up on my iPod or my iPhone or you know Spotify, whatever you know you kids use these days. <laughs> and, um, the youth. Um, and then uh, and I got in my car and I just started you know driving just aimlessly, you know, while having this playing, you know, and then was able to like you know like pull out like if like you know. And like when like there was a couple of times where I had to pull over because you know like that album kind of hit me hard you know like mm-hmm. emotionally or something you know and I just had to like dissect it you know that's how I always you know do music and that's how I recommend people you know do it you know maybe if you're going through some shit grab your friend and hop in the car and just you know drop because I feel like that's when most joyriding is joyriding is the best yeah. be- like dude those long ten hour drives like overnight that we used to have in the van like Nick and I. We would just be up all night just like talking about the dumbest shit, <laughs> listening to the Paranorman soundtrack. Yeah. Because we had a CD player. <laughs> like, yeah. That's great. Oh my yeah. God. Um, so this question should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe this EP for new listeners in three words. No more, no less. Both you have to do it. Really fucking good. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Has anybody done that one yet? Yes. Probably. No. <laughs> God damn it. No. There you go. There you go. Um, they, uh, damn. I got another one. Oh. Two. Sweet. Me. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always hard to describe your music. Uh, three words or less. Uh, That's more than three words. I'm thinking. I'm <laughs> Emotional, uh, driving, driven, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, relax. That's good. Hey. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. I would say, I would say, yeah. Um, emotional, or I would say brooding. Mm-hmm. I know, like the best way to do it is uh, brooding. Dri- dr- driven driving because a lot because it is like a very you know four on the floor kind of album mm-hmm. yeah and then um and uh fun fun's you know? a good one you know yeah. because yeah. even though you know it is because sometimes you know sometimes you got to have a party in your living room and you got to you know blast some sad jams <laughs> and mm-hmm. pour some pbrs over you and your roommate you know yeah yeah you yeah. know if you have if you haven't raged with like you know just one other person and you know you haven't lived yeah so, or you're not an alcoholic and you know good <laughs> for you, good for you. Yeah. that would also do it <laughs> yeah. uh, so in the same vein as last question but not as much pressure is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this ep to invoke in your listeners hope honestly 
you mm. know, because like it really is like a lot of heavy, you know, subject matter, you mm. know, everything from like, you know, getting sober to getting married, you mm. know, um, rejection, um, you know, love, worrying about the generation after you, you know, and stuff like that. And it's looking at it through like hopeful eyes, you know, even though it is like, you, as we keep, you know, reiterating, like it is like, you know, we are like a depressing brooding like not depressing i would say and not you know like debbie down i would say like we're more like we're like that like a like a cold calculated kind of you know band you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. you know everything has a thing for a reason you know and and with this one it's kind of like we're take we're like reintroducing you to us while also like showing you like i think hope's a good one because life ain't shit you know right because it is a different <laughs> it is a different uh you know lyrical standpoint for the band as well it's, it's not completely like it's not like i'm fucking drunk yeah. and broke up with my girlfriend it's like i got i got it is, a, but it is a lot of hope there's yeah. a lot of like more inspiration and like you know just looking at for a better life to kind of situation. you know instead of being depressed about breaking up with your girlfriend you're just depressed because your job fucking sucks yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that's all it is you know we're ju- we're the same band we just grew up pretty you know? much yeah mm-hmm. you yeah. can tell you know we're still we're still the goofy guys you know us as. <laughs> <laughs> um so what is your favorite memory that you guys made while creating this ep oh it's this ep it i think just you know reconnecting on a friendship level i mean you know you you do get you know you, you get older and you kind of like you know you butt heads on the road and like and as you get older, you know, your life kind of takes you different places. And when we were working on this, we really did feel like shit. Like <laughs> this was actually something really cool and special. And I love fucking all you guys. Aww. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's, it's really cool because like, we never really had that talk of like, yo dog, I'm sorry. I was a dick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like none of us like openly like. Yeah, that never happened did that but we but there was kind of this mutual respect this time around and this like this like uh reassurance that it was like we're gonna do like we're we're grown-ups now you know we're not just blindly signing papers <laughs> yeah. at, at a bar in boston yeah. you know like on our first tour yeah uh we we're just like yo, know, like we're gonna like sit down and like all of us agree to it or we're not doing it you know and there was like you know there was like some a couple of you know very you know, not, I wouldn't say heated, but very serious discussions yeah. we had to have, you know, sure. as adults and stuff and be like, mm-hmm. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, we're like, you know, the, we want to do this because this means this to me, you know, like that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I personally didn't want to sign to a record label ever again. Like I was done with the recording industry and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then after, you know, Dana and everybody kind of being like, Hey, we like we're gonna do it this way and here's the books we're gonna open everything up i was like okay you got my vote yeah like, yeah like, yeah it, you, you, you flipped me yeah you, you know? weren't yeah. just like signing to some like big I wasn't, mean you label just, you were i wasn't mm-hmm. just sitting there being like no yeah <laughs> uh, yeah exactly yeah. And, yeah and you weren't si- oh, no. you weren't like, signing to a major again you were signing to someone that's like supported your career pretty oh, much man, since exactly yeah, yeah. You could, you could, you could clip this if you want, <laughs> but I'm never gonna sign to a fucking major label ever again. Love or it, yeah. Big ass label, yeah. you know, like yeah. fucking DIY or die. Mm-hmm. Sure. Period. Not really DIY. I mean, I do want people to do stuff for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't want to do <laughs> everything. I'm not, I'm not store, unless you like cat hair on everything. You ain't, I ain't storing no merch here. You know? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Like oh you oh you're gonna fly me to a show cool yeah I'll do that yeah I'm not perfect oh, yeah, yeah. suddenly you're on a major label again you want me to ride in a van absolutely not no like, you know, count me out you know, we're getting a chauffeur <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a tour bus or you're flying me it's not no in my van. own tour bus yeah <laughs> With everybody has their if own the budget bus. isn't big enough for each member With of me the tour and my bus. Jungle Oak family. <laughs> No, no lie, no lie. My brother, through my brother, I am related to a Juggalo family. Yeah, my my brother married into a Juggalo family. Yeah, oh, wow. respect. Very fun burning for him, you know. So I'm a Juggalo sympathizer. You know? Okay. <laughs> like, I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Circle back to that. Yeah, but yeah, there you go. 
Fun uh-huh. fact. <laughs> Great. <Nice>. Sorry. <laughs> um, so for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour. You're at a gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What is your snack of choice? Oh, dog. Here you go. Okay. So mine's going to be very convoluted because mine depends where in the country or the world I'm at. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to hit you with the East Coast, the Midwest, and the West. All right. All right? Okay. okay. East Coast. You're going to a Love's, all right? It's a truck stop and gas station. It's like Bucky's, but they're everywhere. Okay, Bucky's never heard of it. Everywhere. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of it. I think I've, seen it. I think I've <laughs> seen it, but I always pass it. It's a truck stop, but they got like hot food. They got like a hot bar. Okay. And you're, okay. gonna get, you're gonna get the two the, the twofer with the, with, the, uh, with the mac and cheese and then the chicken nuggets. That is a, it's, it's like $4. It fills you up. It doesn't make you run for the bathroom. And you're going to down that with one liter of Diet Dr. Pepper. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me? Uh, okay. So if I'm on the East Coast, I'm probably hitting like a Wawa or a Sheets. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, obviously you're going to go to, I mean, we, we, there's a Wawa down the street from here. There's also yeah. a row of farms. I'm going to get myself a sub, bag of chips, and a soda. If I'm in the Midwest, I'm more than likely just grabbing a bag of beef jerky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There ain't much out there. Ain't much out there. No. <laughs> you're lucky, you're you're lucky there was a convenience store. You'd be surprised how much beef jerky you'll see throughout the country. Like every gas station will kind of have like their own like it's like kind of like boutique beef jerky. It's because you can't mm-hmm. drink and drive. So like instead of like, you know, trying out different beers, you're trying out different yeah. jerkies, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to say Aldi's jerky, beef jerky. I've been having that a lot lately. That's really cool. Oh yeah. Um, Aldi has the best beef jerky. Dude, it, the 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 Hawaiian beef jerky, it is so good. Ooh. Um, I haven't tried that one. Yeah, but I would have to I'm gonna reiterate I'm gonna go with the Wawa on the East Coast. <laughs> okay. In the Midwest, you're going to the loves. You're just going, you know, your typical gas station, you know, whatever. Now, when you hit Utah, there's a there's this place. One place. It's the only gas station on the highway between Utah and California or Utah and Washington. It's like this one gas station. It is a straight up tourist trap. Like oh. they have alpacas out front. They have oh. llamas that you can pet. When you walk in, it's there's a sign pointing up and it says "Watch out for the bats." And you look up and it's a bunch of baseball bats. Oh. Um, he has a barrel and it says baby rattlers and you look in it's little baby rattles um and it's just like a little shitty place and you know but it's just like fun as shit you know it's like a and fever that, dream i can, i don't know the name of it but you can have any band that has ever toured i know it's called but what is it it's called the middle of nowhere oh it is yeah yeah the middle of nowhere, middle man, of nowhere. You know, that place rules it's awesome. um and then obviously if you're going to texas you're going to bucky's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We were we were supposed to get Bucky's tattoos, <laughs> and two of the people that weren't in the band got the tattoos, and the rest of us didn't. <laughs> no. Yeah, and it, it just so happened the guy was just like, oh, "I'm tired." Yeah, the tattoo artist was like, "Yeah, I'm dipping out." Like we that. like got like we got like a we were like staying at the venue like they had like an apartment upstairs, and the guy was like, "Yo, I'm like a tattoo artist. I'll tattoo you guys." And we looked him up. We we're like, "Yo, like let's all get the Bucky's tattoos." So um, our buddy Ian, who was filling in, he got the tattoo, and then he got on a plane and flew home because we had like two days off, and he oh, flew wow. to like, be with his family. Mm-hmm. And then um, our old tour manager Matt, he got it too. And then like, and then Swindle was like about to get his, and then the guy was like, "Yo, I'll see you. I'm fading. I gotta go." What? And we were like, "Yo, dog, it's like 1:30 in the morning. We're we're raging, like yeah." Back when we were like at the height of our partying, yeah, it's just getting and started, we, man. And we were like, we were like, yeah, like we're playing dice and stuff. We're like, you know, doing Baltimore shit, and then um, he's, and the guy was just like, "All right, bye," and we were like, "What?" He was like here's two hundred dollars thank you like but uh i still need to get that tattoo yeah (laughs) Yeah. but yeah bucky's definitely middle of nowhere loves wah wah all right perfect all right uh so on the topic of food if the band was a dish what dish would band be and why pizza because everybody loves it (laughs) yeah okay Okay. no I know some people that don't like this. Oh. <laughs> My cousin only listens to country music, so he's just oh. like, cool. yeah. I'm just like, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. Maybe pistachio flavored ice cream. Oh. Why that? Why that? Because, like, it's still ice cream, mm-hmm. but then you're like, that's a little weird. Uh... 
I don't know. I've never had pistachio ice cream. It just sounded good in my head. So you got you're it's you're like. I feel like we're uh, I feel like we're we're more like if we were going to be an ice cream, we're like Halo Top. Yeah. Oh, it's that diet, it's ice, diet cream. ice cream. Because you eat the whole thing, and you're going to be like, "Man, this is going to be heavy." Mm-hmm. And then you're done, and you're like, "Actually, that wasn't too bad." I could go for. I could do another one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hurt yeah. 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 me yeah. again, Daddy. Yeah, I could do another one. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah. I like that. It's a good answer. I feel like we're Halo Top ice cream. Right? <laughs> yeah. That was good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a specific thing, you know. I oh, no, yeah. Hill and Top and Pizza, you know. Everybody <laughs> loves us and we're not that heavy. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, so for these last couple questions, we're actually going to shift away from music if that's okay with you guys. Awesome. Oh, I like that. Better. I love that. Love perfect. Them. So we're actually going to go straight to Death Row. Boom. So if you're on Death Row, what would your last meal be with the drink? Here's the thing. You get a buffet. Because then it never ends. <laughs> we literally got had, that answer like two hours ago. We just had the dude from Armor for Sleep say the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> Actually, if that if you're listening, that dude shaped my life, like my career. I love I love Armor for Sleep. I remember hearing that first album, but I was just like, "That's a bummer that he took your answer." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you then can still I'll have it. it. No, I mean, you know, just because, you know, John Wayne Gacy had Burger King doesn't mean Ted Bundy couldn't have it or vice versa. You know? yeah. Maybe yeah. you um, maybe you and Ben will be dying at the exact same time. And you guys yes, can bond and be, you know, while doing your all you can eat buffet. Exactly. That'd yeah. be nice. <laughs> all right. But wait, what kind of buffet did he choose? I would do a Chinese buffet. He didn't give he us didn't a specific specify. answer. Yeah. yeah, Chinese buffet, definitely. There's this mm-hmm. place in Glen Burnie by where I grew up. So mm-hmm. good. I would just have them cater my death. Oh yeah! All right. They have sushi. They have ice cream. Mm-hmm. They have everything. Yeah. Food, oh man. yeah! And how are you washing that down? Uh, I'd probably just do chicken wings. I love chicken wings. Oh yeah! You're not gonna do pho? Nah, pho. My man just had pho like right before yeah. this interview. I love pho. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I eat a lot of pho, but I also eat a lot of chicken. I'm gonna, I'm going with chicken. Okay. And then, yeah. what drinks are you guys having? Oh, diet coke. That's all I drink. Mm-hmm. Oh man, diet Dr Pepper. <laughs> like you know you gotta have that ddp in your life baby fair you enough know? actually no you know what it's a better one that's like kind of hard to find around here but i would go with um with a uh, coke zero vanilla oh that, that's the jam that's okay the, or diet code red mountain dude because that's super hard to find so then if they can't find it boom i'm not dying <laughs> exactly you know, i'm, I'm not dying food. until you know, i get my soda. Get me a non-alcoholic pbr baby <laughs> Only yeah. in Chicago, my friend. <laughs> yeah, but you don't tell them that I was important say, part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, hey, I got this cousin Mickey down in Illinois. He knows where to get it. But it's $35 a six pack. Like, oh. Is this guy's life really worth $35? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? Regular show. That's yeah. good. Lollipop land technically is what it's called, but yeah, I would. Um, that that place rules. I, I'd I'd love to be more kind of be good friends. Sorry, one fictional. Pick for me. You know me better. I would say WCW. WCW. WCW circa nineteen ninety eight, my man. That's where I would be. Yeah, because wrestling, it's you know, it is fictional. It is fictional. You know, it's predetermined. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. No I, actually, no, I would say you would you would fit in perfectly. Springfield, Springfield like the Simpsons, Simpsons, or check it out. Uh-oh. The the version of New York that the Friends are in. You think? So? Oh, I know because I know you I don't like, see that. Like, we aren't Friends people. No. But that version of New York seems really cool. You know, like a loft apartment for like a hundred bucks. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm actually going to change my. I would. I'm. I'm going to go with um. I'm gonna go with Arlen, Texas, from King of the Hill. Okay. Oh, okay. I love King of the Hill. That's like my that Mission Hill are like my two favorite parts. Yeah. yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So I have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person we've spoken to has actually said it is the most important question. What is your favorite color? Oh. Mine is maroon. That's a very nice. good color. Mine's like a like a um. It's really weird. So. It's like a mocha. Okay. So kind of like a brownish, like a stain, like a brown stain. 
like a light brown yeah like like fender has a color called mocha ah, okay. mm-hmm. like on their guitars and i had a guitar like that it was my first like american guitar that's like my favorite color ever it's so it's just like it's it's just like this beautiful like natural brown but also in some lights you can kind of see some like purples and grays in it at the same time mm-hmm. it's like a little chameleon color it's like what they used to paint all the cars on pit my ride with oh okay. yeah <laughs> but it's not really that at all like, oh. <laughs> it's brown. Like, yeah. yeah okay all right yeah, sorry yeah uh, a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so as Glory said, that's all the questions we have to say. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Uh, check out our new album. Yeah. Uh, the self-titled uh, August twenty sixth. Twenty sixth. August twenty sixth. Everywhere. Um, you can pre-save it now uh, on all the streaming services. And spit it out was just uh, premiered by Flood Magazine. Don't want to, you know, don't don't mean to uh, advertise a. a a um a competitor of yours they're uh, way bigger than we are it's okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the flood magazine check out these guys uh you know i will say that uh so there is this ep coming out and uh there is a lot more i don't i don't i don't think we can say anything yet but there is things happening so uh there's some rumblings there's a, you know okay. we might be adults but we can also you know carve out some time there's an anniversary we... coming up that something is going to be announced soon so oh, you can say that. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you can say that. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not. I ain't getting in fucking trouble. That's, I'm not going to say. I'm not saying <laughs> yeah. an anniversary. Andrew <laughs> said he's got loose lips, so yeah, my, he might my, just say my anything. Year anniversary with my girlfriends <laughs> exactly. in a couple of months. You know? Oh, well, there you go. There you go. That's the anniversary <laughs> we're all talking about. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for Stylus, guys. Thank you guys so much. Of course, this has been Andrew and Nick from Have Mercy, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.